So we are debuting a new segment on Waters World. It's called What We Learned About Democrats This Week. Kamala Harris kicking things off in New Hampshire. She wants to get rid of Columbus Day. Would you support efforts on a federal level to change Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day? I appreciate and applaud your point and your effort and count me in on support. There goes the Italian vote. <laughs> By the way, do we still get a three-day weekend? Bernie Sanders officially jumping into the 2020 race. While many socialists are probably thrilled, a video from the past may point to his future plans for America. You know, it's funny. Sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. In other countries, people don't line up for food. The rich get the food and the poor starve to death. Okay. Speaking of things that sound good on paper but fail to live up, video of Beto O'Rourke from his punk rock past. Beto here rocking out on rhythm guitar back in 2003, wearing a onesie and a sheep mask. But that's not the only questionable costume the Texas native has donned. Beto here dressed to impress, wearing a dress? But even scarier. FBI statistics revealing Minneapolis, Minnesota as the top hotbed for terror here in America. FBI stats showing 45 Somalis have left the city to join ISIS or al-Shabaab, and another dozen arrested while trying to leave for ISIS. By the way, Minnesota's 5th Congressional District, which includes Minneapolis, repped by none other than freshman firebrand Rep. Omar, who has defended wannabe terrorists in the past, not making any connections, just pointing out the facts. Joining me now, counselor to the president, Kelly Ann Conway. How are you doing, Kelly Ann? Hi, Jesse. So I wanted to play some sound of Senator Harris talking about reparations and her support of them. Listen to this. America has a history of 200 years of slavery. Mm -hmm. We had Jim Crow. We had legal segregation in America for a very long time. People aren't starting out on the same base in terms of their ability to succeed. And so we have got to, to recognize that and give people the, a lift up. So you are for some type of yes, I am. reparation? Okay. Yes, I am. Okay, more craziness from the Democrats, Kellyanne. I don't see why she doesn't sponsor a bill. She's a senator. Put it up to a vote. She should do that. Actually, some experts say this could cost trillions of dollars, and none other than our first African-American president, Barack Obama, did not show support for this when asked many different times, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, other top Democrats. Uh, I think Kamala Harris, after having a really good rollout and really good fundraising numbers, has been stumbling quite a bit. I agree. Um, I'd say the four S's really quickly. Smollett, as in the guy she called her friend, one of the kindest, gentlest people she knows has been turned out. <laughs> Uh, now he's he's the target of a criminal investigation. Um, socialism, she said she's for Medicare for all. How many people work in the in private insurance industry in her home state of California would lose their jobs if we had Medicare for all? 180 million people or so would lose their private insurance. Um, also, I would say the smoking. Her own father came out against her saying, how dare you stereotype our Jamaican heritage by saying smoking pot is okay. <laughs> and then, of course, shopping because oh. we want female <laughs> candidates to all be looked upon as serious, so she went shopping right. for the Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor jacket with female reporters. Yeah, and the reporters were helping her try it on and, and yucking it up. I can't imagine if the roles were reversed there. You brought up Jussie Smollett. Um, you know, alleged attack, everybody said. Um, no video evidence, Nobody but that was that. an alleged attack. And then we have an actual attack, so we believe, yes out in Berkeley where a Turning Point USA young conservative student was punched in the face. Video evidence, let's watch. Jesus Christ. What? What? Ooh. Wow, right in the kisser. So how do you, Kellyanne, uh, reconcile you know, these political hate crimes, which I believe those are, and we have a guy later in the show who got a gun pulled to him because he was wearing a MAGA hat, now you have a guy getting punched in the face, and then these other hate crime hoaxes and Jesse Smollett, which gets so much attention, there's just very unbalanced coverage. 
Well, it's completely unbalanced. And look, uh, people, people, there are always going to be liars out there, but their enablers in the mainstream media are really what sh should concern everyone because people are charged with delivering us the news, not their opinions, not their likes and retweets on Twitter, not what they hope is the truth, but what is the truth. You just saw the man be assaulted, a crime committed against him on the videotape. We all, we all know what we see. And yet, uh, when Jesse Smollett came out and gave his account, all the headlines, all the comments, none of them said Jesse Smollett says he was attacked. It says he is a victim of a racist, homophobic attack by MAGA people. Very few people, if any, in the media used the words alleged or even just attributed it as his account. The only question they had was, is it a hate crime? And look what's happened there. Yeah. So what's happening is the whole first facts, truth, truth, truth crowd really invents their own according to who the perpetrator is, who the yep. victim is. But I want that guy found who punched and assaulted. That is a crime What you saw. That guy should be found, expelled from the school, and held to account in California. All right. Thank you very much, Kellyanne. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Jesse. There are huge disparities in this country based on race. Absolutely. And um, they cannot be denied, and they must be addressed. So when we're talking about recognizing the inequalities, the inequities. It's not about saying I'm trying to take from those who have achieved success if they played by the rules and worked hard. Good for you, keep it. But I am saying we need to be honest and address that not everyone has an equal opportunity Absolutely. to access to success, and we've got to address that. California Senator Kamala Harris, uh, talking about reparations, uh, it has come up on the campaign trail. Elizabeth Warren now uh, supporting this as well. For African Americans, we must confront the dark history of slavery and government-sanctioned discrimination in this country that has had many consequences, including undermining the ability of black farmers to build wealth in America for generations. We need systemic, structural changes to address that. This has come up before the last cycle. Bernie Sanders was asked about reparations and what he thought about them why you weren't in favor of reparations well again it's it's the same reason that the president is not and, and i think and what is you know, that reason clinton is not we have got to invest in the future what we have got to do is address poverty in america something that very few people talk about and especially poverty in the african-american community and the latino community the president obviously is talking about president obama who spoke out against that as well uh, just one of the examples of kind of going left at least part of the 2020 field let's bring in our panel fox news media analyst howard kurtz molly hemingway senior editor at the federalist and jeff mason white house correspondent for borders howie we're getting more and more examples of at least part of this field really touching base with the progressive side of the party to try to tap into that Maybe this business about Kamala Harris coming off reparations, maybe this is her wall. It cites her base, but it will never be built. I'm frankly kind of stunned, as we just saw, too radical for Bernie. Barack Obama never touched it, that Senator Harris, Elizabeth Warren, would come out for this. Uh, I understand she may be trying to excite her African-American base in the case of Senator Harris. Uh, I understand it may be important to talk about racial inequality, but this is the kind of thing that can turn off white moderate voters who might be looking for an alternative to Trump, and I think that it gives the GOP a very fat target, and it could open uh, an even greater lane for a uh, more center-left candidate like Amy Klobuchar, or if he ever finishes his Hamlet act and gets on the stage, Joe Biden. Molly. Yeah, if uh, socialism, vegetarianism, and reparations are the campaign theme for the eventual Democratic nominee, it sounds like Donald Trump will win in a landslide. But that's what the talk has been this week, uh, have been some of these very far left views. Uh, that It does appeal to a certain constituency, mm -hmm. but on a larger scale, I'm not sure how well it will go. We need to have details on what do these reparations mean so that people can determine whether they want, as taxpayers, you know, a nation of immigrants, and a lot of them are taxpayers, what, they'll need to know whether they, uh, whether they are on board with the reparations. Similar to the details about the Green New Deal, which has now been called aspirational and kind of a resolution, uh, but we've kind of laid it out as it's been written so far this week in different elements of it. Yes, and uh, it, it all does come down to the details. It is interesting to see what people's larger scale is, what their, what their big vision is, uh, but we need to get much more nitty-gritty. Our Fox News poll uh, most recently, uh, socialism and capitalism and the split in parties, favorable, unfavorable. Uh, you can kind of see where this, with, where this stands, uh, and this is across both parties, uh, but for Democrats, it's much tighter, the favorable, unfavorable on socialism, capitalism. Jeff? 
Yeah, I think that's probably one reason why President Trump keeps bringing it up. I mean, you're clear, you know? you're, you're sensing that this is one of the main pillars he's going to run on. I mean, he keeps, he keeps bringing, he keeps coming back to it. Even in his speech just about Venezuela from Miami a few days ago, he spent as much time talking about problems in that country as he did talking about this is something we can't have in our own country. And that was a clear reference to people like Bernie Sanders and, and others. So yeah, I think that that word is going to come up. I think that issue is going to come up. But going back to the conversation we were just having, I think reparations is a word, and that was part of the question for those uh, presidential candidates. But I think when we get to the details, if this continues to be a theme, it'll be more about trying to work on income inequality, trying to make sure that uh, poor people, both African Americans and Latinos, as, as they mentioned, have, some, have more opportunities and have policies that can help them. Whether or not it ends up being a check, which is probably what people think of when they hear reparations, I'm not so sure that's what they're talking about. There, there are candidates in the Democratic Party who are speaking more towards the center part of the party. Here's uh, John Delaney on the trail. A lot of people are talking about climate change and all these kind of things they want to do, most of which are completely impractical. If we want to win, if we want to beat Trump, we should not put up a candidate who embraces socialism. So he's out there talking about that. You mentioned Joe Biden. We don't know if he's getting in, but likely would have similar talk. And Amy Klobuchar, who has another article in The New York Times now about this treatment of staff. Um, in which she's addressed many times, including here on the panel. An aide joining her on a trip to South Carolina in 2008 had procured a salad for his boss while hauling their bags through an airport terminal. But once aboard, he delivered the grim news. He had fumbled the plastic eating utensils before reaching the gate, and the crew did not have any forks on such a short flight. What happened next was typical. Ms. Klobuchar berated her aide instantly for the slip-up. What happened after that was not. She pulled a comb from her bag and began eating the salad with it, according to four people from familiar with the episode, then she handed the comb to her staff member with a directive, clean it. Uh, Howie, this is, I mean, this is now probably the sixth article yeah. citing anonymous sources. And that's the point. I'm not going to defend Combgate. Maybe she did some things she shouldn't have done. But we, there are probably about a half a dozen uh, former aides to Amy Klobuchar who have been talking to HuffPost, BuzzFeed, now the New York Times, trashing her. She's so difficult to work for. She's so cruel to her staff. I don't think this resonates with voters. What, she's tough on her staff? She says she's tough on herself, and she has high standards for her staff. It, it just seems the kind of thing that if these people feel so strongly, having worked or dealt with Amy Klobuchar, that she is a terrible person, then they ought to go on the record. And as long as they're doing the anonymous sniping from behind a curtain of protection granted by journalists, I think it's unfair and I don't think it goes anywhere. Here she is last night addressing this again. I am really proud of our staff. Ben's been with me seven years. Um, you can ask him. And uh, we do really great work. And, um, you know, I am just, not that many people have raised it um, here because I think they're much more focused on can you do the job? And I have shown that I can do the job. I mean, it sounds like she's going to have to keep on ask, answering this question. Well, and this is a story that people in Washington, D.C. are very excited by. I agree that there are big problems with it being sourced anonymously to people who are you know, going after a former, a former boss. And I'm not sure that being a tough boss is a trait that will make people not vote for someone. I think it might even be, you know, when they look at the results that she has achieved, they, they, they have a lot that they can go with. She has been a senator who has accomplished things in a tough environment. Uh, that's probably more important than if she's mean to her staff. But let's be be clear. I mean, we've heard these stories around Washington for some time. It's not just these articles. I mean, it's it's been floating out. Yeah, I've heard it long before she was a presidential candidate. And I think that if there's anything we've learned in the last couple of years, uh, the last year in particular, Americans do care that people treat each other well.